Hey campers, George here, back in the man cave. Yeah, I look kind of a chilly day today. Uh, in the low 30s, it's about uh, 31 right now outside. And it's overcast, foggy, not a good day. Anyway, working here on my walking stick. Big stick number four, my bushcraft reference stick. And as you can see, I've been planning different notches and how I want to do it and it's going to take some planning on this guy um, to find where the handle's going to be where I need certain things I can't just put notches anywhere and wrap anywhere it's going to have to be planned out so it's what I'm doing right now if you remember this guy I got a good feel for what I'm doing here it's not very good but at least I know what I'm doing and like I said it's coming off the problem I had is, as you can see right now, is all this extra. And I've been considering cutting it off using a different piece of wood, same kind of length, same size, and having it separate and working on it separate, and then mounting it back on here using a bushcraft skill. That's kind of the direction I'm hoping I'm going. Because I, I really struggled trying to get in certain places when uh, handling the whole stick. I've been planning what notches to put on there. And I've come up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine notches. With some extras and that things like when I put a hole through the stick, maybe I'll make a peg to go in that hole that can come in and out and hanging on, I don't know, some cordage that's been tied in a specific bushcraft knot. Thoughts, thoughts, things going through my head, but I've got to get started on this thing or else I'll never get it done. So sitting planning right now and then my plan today is to, once I have a pretty good idea, go outside, do some cutting, measuring and get started on it. I mean, I have been working on it. I've cleaned it up, uh, sandpapered it down a little bit. I don't want to do too much. I wanted to leave some sort of character on it. So there you go. That's where we are right now. I'm just going to finish up my thoughts here, get my ducks in a row, make some measurements, and then maybe we'll trudge outside in the cold, maybe build a fire to keep warm while we work on this guy. So, uh, another thing that I thought about, and that is, I have my bushcraft tool roll, and I have a bunch of tools in there, and I was thinking, that's what I should use. I should stick to that, not use anything outside of that what I plan on having with me in the outdoors when I'm doing a bushcraft walkabout, camp over, whatever, um, with bushcraft in mind, that's what I'm going to have with me. So that's what I want to keep to work on this. So before I really get going on it and pulling out the knife and the saw and all that good stuff, just a reminder, peeps, safety first. Uh, be careful. Never cut towards yourself. Your body is not a stop cut away, find yourself somewhere to work on so that you have some sort of base that you can put your wood on to work on. You don't want to use yourself and uh, always keep safety in mind. I'll, in the description below, I'll put my quick links for you so that you can just go to whichever part you want to have a look at. I'm by the fireplace again, um, thinking about building a fire, but may have to hold off because it's kind of windy and odd. And in the county I'm in, you need to have a garden hose close by for water. And I've already put mine away. <laughs> Didn't want it to freeze because it's getting that cold. So, meh, fire's out of the question. But we can still cut up wood. So that's what I'm planning so on doing. Get started on this thing and uh, hopefully it's going to work out. So uh, catch up on the last video. I did a practice face you can see in there and uh, I used a piece that I'm not gonna use on the stick so I got to cut him off and so first thing I'm going to do is cut this guy off then I got to figure out where I want my handle and I'll show you how I figure that out as well I was gonna cut this off the decision I had to make was is this a walking stick or is it a walking staff the stuff I want to put on it 
it's going to have to be a staff and that means a little bit longer than your normal everyday walking stick. Um, if you remember my last one I made, the one with the giraffe head, this is about, I'm going to say a good foot and a half longer. Going to keep it that length, I was going to cut this curved piece off here at the end, but I, it's kind of growing on me, so I think I'm going to keep it. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to cut this off, and then we're going to figure out where we want the handle to be, and uh, I'll use some cordage there to uh, show the handle and to give it a bit of grip. Do it. So it's going to be a process. I've tidied up a bit, and I, like I said, I, I didn't take everything off. I wanted to leave some character on it. I did take the bark off, but there, some of the inner bark is still on the crack here, which, like I said, has extended that way and this way. So that's going to have to be wrapped, and we'll use some bush rod skills to do that. I'm going to cut this. So what I'm going to do is, I've decided I'm not going to use this, so I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to cut it off just below the hedge. I want as much stuff as I can, so that's what I'll do. I'll just use my trusty uh, PS10. So what are we going to do first, and I want to get as much out of you as I can. So I'm looking at about there. Yeah, we'll cut. So there we have our handy dandy head. I might just play with this a little bit more and see what I can come up with. So the character head is going to go up here, either I'm going to use a different piece of wood. Like I said, that uh, friend from work uh, got me some basswood, which is a lot easier to carve. So I'm going to see what he got me, put it in the back of the truck last night. So I'm either going to add a head or I'm going to carve here. I haven't decided yet. Either way, I don't think it's a big deal. What I want to do now is now that I have my length of my stick and see where a comfortable position for at the handle to be and then we work everything around the handle okay so the way we do the handle is I'm gonna stand with the stick next to me with my arm bent and I don't want it at a your arm to be at an exact 90 degrees you want a little bit higher because that's typically where you will hold it so I'll show you what I mean right now That's a little low. I want to go a little bit higher where you actually bend your elbow a little bit more. So you can see I did raise my hand a little bit higher than what you'd expect. One of the reasons is, is when you walk and it's getting a little treacherous out there, you're going to be using this a lot more. And when your hand is at a 90, you don't get to push down as well as if it's bent up a little bit more. Plus it gives you a little bit more push. So that's where I want it right there. So I'm just going to mark that real quick. So I know my handle now is going to go between these two marks here. That gives me about, let me say a foot and a half from, you can see here about a foot and a half from the top of the, the staff. So that gives me some room to do some just regular uh, notches in here and then the ones where I'm going to be drilling, I want them at the top here because uh, from the handle with the uh, uh, cordage I'm going to be using, I'm going to have dangly bits coming up with different knots on it and then of course the pegs that are going to go into the square and the round hole. Then down here I've got to put some cordage around here and the way things are going right now with the construction guides <laughs> I'm going to have to do that indoors. Okay, guys. Uh, wasn't having much luck outside there. The construction guys, just too noisy. Um, I'm going to just make a mess in here. And uh, hopefully it won't be too bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do some knife work. I'm going to actually make where the handle is going to be. Um, I'm going to reduce it a little bit so that it's going to be indented. So what you're going to have is it'll go in like that just a little bit. And what that does is for any reason, if your cordage gets a little loose, it's not going to slip off. It kind of helps it stay in there. I learned a new way to do that and I thought it was pretty cool. So I thought I'd show you uh, when I do it. 
I will say that a lot of the stuff that I do try out here and, and use and uh, show you guys, I get from reference videos on YouTube. Um, some of the stuff I did know already, but I'm going to put links below to some channels where I get a lot of pointers from. And they're great channels. They're obviously big, popular channels. But if you haven't seen them, you might want to stop by if you're interested in bushcraft and that sort of thing. These guys know it all. A couple of things. We'll give it a go first. And I'm going to put some danglers underneath it uh, to hold it in. Maybe make a couple of little pretty patterns on the handle just to hold the, the danglers there. So as you can see, I have my uh, little tool roll, bushcraft tool roll. And... I'm going to use this guy, and uh, if you saw my previous video on this, this is the Opinel. I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure, it's the Opinel number 8, and uh, I, I'm I, I'm really impressed with this knife. <laughs> so I'm... so I'm just going to make a stop notch all the way around hopefully in a straight line here so we have that one and then on the other side as well all it is is a stop cut all the way around just like you're going to do a round reduction all the way around so from there to there so hopefully with the other camera you'll get a I'll be able to get you some better shots so all I'm doing is putting that stop cut around here and I'm just gonna make it a little deeper I don't need it to be too deep it's just really to keep the cordage from slipping like that and then on this side same thing again so I've done my stop cut now I'm gonna just work my way down into the into the stop cuts like that all the way around and you can so I'm, I'm not just pushing down I'm actually slicing in which gives you more control and a better cut so let's get to that around. side Like I said, I don't need it really deep. And if you can see it there, um, that's just the first go at it. And I'm just going to go around one more time. Really. All the way around. Or as close as you can. So there you can see not very and I'm not taking a lot off as you can see yeah. and I'm just going to repeat what I was doing so same thing again just into that stop cut and as you can see I'm working further and further back and uh, I just wanted to show you that when you're working you can use your thumbs which gives you a lot better control on uh, your blade so get that even pressure you're pushing from here if you have your thumb there it evens out so it does give you a lot more control and then I'll work back this way same thing and try and get it even all the way across okay so here you can see I've uh, trimmed it all the way back here and just brought it reduced it all the way around here and that is where my handle is so you can see my handle is gonna be a little bit bigger than my hand and we're gonna put cordage and wrap it around here and like I said there's a little process I want to uh, experiment with and hopefully that'll work that's the plan anyway <laughs> what a mess <laughs> put it all into one pile well most of it anyway <laughs> I have my cordage these are all paracord but i have three different colors here and i have this which is not paracord but it came with 
my French uh, F1 uh, pup tent. And this is what they were using for the pegs and everything. I didn't like the color. I couldn't see it. I tripped over it all the time. So I changed it for brighter stuff. And I, the other thing I'm going to be using eventually will be my bank line. And that's what I'm going to use to take care of that crack. Uh, one of the reasons is, is it's different to the rest. And I wanted to show different kinds of cordage out there. My plan is this. And hopefully I can show you this. Let's get, this length is going to change. But what I was thinking is this is the handle. And this uh, paracord, i got to tell you, believe it or not, is rated at 750 pounds. It uses my handle. I like the color. It's a bushcrafty color in my handle. And this is going to be wrapped around here. And then my the idea is to somehow incorporate these three and get the handle to hold them so that they hang down here like this and I'm going to tie uh, a couple of knots that sort of thing in here and just have them dangling down not too far Side. I can always take it apart if it doesn't work and no, I'm not that patient, but I am persistent. <laughs> I have this, and what I'm here's how the wrap is going to go. It's going to be a straight flat wrap. There'll be no pattern in the wrap or anything except for maybe these guys. Um, you might be able to see them, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And what you have to do is I'm going to have these three here. And I want to make it, I'm going to, so I have them uh, trimmed off, put them down here. And like I said, just unevenly. And then the whole trick to wrap your handle is you start with a loop, a big loop like this. And I'm going to place it on the handle above the handle so it's going to stick out and you want some on this end as well sticking up longer than what your handle is going to be and right. the tricky part is going to be holding all these together i'm missing some there we go and we're going to put them like this now I have my loop there, you can see it there, and I'm going to take my 550 and wrap. I'm going to wrap it around, like this, nice and tight, and bring it down. And line it all up just like that and I'm going to keep doing that keeping this as tight as I possibly can and I'm keeping just, everything nice and flat you don't want them twisting over pulling together keeping it tight and you can see how that works here are my three pieces out here and the end piece of this, the tag end, and just keep going. I'm going to lift this one up, bend it over, hold it down there, and bring this around. And bring it on there. And do the same thing. Two wraps, pulling them tight, keep, keeping them together. So hopefully you can see that. And you can see this guy is sticking out. And I've done two more wraps after him. I put him back down and wrap him in again. Pull him tight and go again. And now I have that guy there. 
And if I want, I could do it with all of them. And if I pull them out a little bit more, we can do that. So here, I've wrapped it all the way, all the way up. You can see here, keeping those wraps as tight as possible and pushing them together nice and tight, just like that. And there you can see the three different pieces of paracord that I have. Remember the loop? Here is the end of my loop right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this piece, the other end of my wrap so much, and I'm going to feed it in that loop, just like that. Nope. Like this, into the loop, just like that. And then I'm going to pull it through. Nice and tight. It's basically my last loop, so I'm going to make it tight. So now you can see I'm going through that end loop there. Now, I'm going to get this other tag end that I left here on the other end of the loop. While keeping this tight, I'm going to pull on this tag end. And hopefully, I'll be able to pull that loop back into here, which is going to pull this tag end in. That's the plan. Let's give it a try. And I'm going to have to use my teeth here. You see how it's come in? And I'm going to keep pulling on that. Ideally, and I kind of made a little boo-boo here, this tag end I should have made longer so I can get my hand around it and give it a good tug. Or even better, use my toggle tool. Ideally, I want to get that underneath the first wrap. I don't know if you can see that. I want to pull that loop underneath here. Hopefully. I might have wrapped and there you can see there. Now, this guy is not going anywhere. And this guy has tightened up down here as well. So there you see it. And I'm going to make sure everything's nice and tight here. I don't like the way this is not tight enough for me. And it looks like I'm going to have to do this again because I forgot something else. And I'm not going to show you again. <laughs> I made the mistake. This part of the loop should have gone over this part of the loop on the other side. So it crossed over, which keeps this tight. But now what's happening is this is pulling back and loosening everything up, which ain't going to work for me. So I'm going to redo it again, and I'll show you the end result. Okay, the mistake I made in the beginning, I just wanted to show you that. I need, like that, you just want to cross them over and keep this flat. And that's going to stop it from sliding, because it's really going to pull down on the tag end. Okay, so I redid it the right way. I did twist uh, the, the loop. So now it's a lot tighter and it stayed tight. You can see I've got it to this point where I looped it through. Now, another thing I did, obviously, which I didn't do before, was give myself a lot of tag end to pull that loop through. And that's where I'm going to use my toggle tool, this guy. So I'm going to wrap around here a couple of times. And let's see if we can give it a good tug. Ooh. And there it went in. Okay. Yeah. And there you can see it's actually gone in. So let's turn that so that you can see that. See how it's tucked underneath? This, I'm just going to trim off right here. And it's not going anywhere. And this side, same thing. Or I might just let it dangle to be part of the other danglers. So there you go. We have the, the handle on. And you can see the, the three different pieces of cord. Why? Because I could. 
And then, of course, the way the end ties off is a great idea. And when you pull on that loop, it really keeps everything tight. And what to do with these guys, I've got to think about. So that's what I've got to think about and then come back to you on that. But we have a handle. And I like it. Nice and simple and kind of bushcrafty. And don't forget, like, share, subscribe. You know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back with the rest of it. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye.